Hi and welcome to Add More Zest. My name's Rebecca, also known as a Four Kids at 147, and it's Heaven and Earth Design Day. And it's actually today that I'm filming this for it to go live. So you are seeing my current progress. Uh, so to lift this up, that is where I'm at. So we do have this little fairy with a light and then we have the tree still working on a bit of blossom. So there is some sort of single bits here, there and everywhere. I'm working with a pink tray today and I've decided to go for the matching rose gold metal pen because it's pretty um, is the main reason. I have loads of comments from Heaven and Earth Design um, whip and chats to go through but let me zoom you in let's see if I can I can scoot that down just a little bit but if I scoot it down too much it gets in the way of where I'm going next um, I still don't have the pattern keeper update absolutely gutted it is the one update that sort of more so helps me. Um, there's been other updates, bug fixes, other things that have come in that are still good updates and things, but they're not like ones that particularly are like, oh yeah, I need. Uh, the one update I do really, really want is the one where I can get rid of zeros um, and they can disappear and I've still not got the update. I keep checking so every day I end up checking um, as soon as I've fit so as soon as I finish my section for the day sometimes before um, I'll check to see if I've got the update but nope I'm still waiting on it. Uh, so I still have my zeros showing unfortunately but you know it is what it is I've still not got to another zero I feel like I'm doing absolutely loads of some of the colors that there's not many left of um, I feel like I'm doing loads of those but not quite getting to a zero so we keep plodding on um, and see where we get. Oh, I've not had this number for a little bit. 169. Um, I, did have a, I did have a few sections where there was loads of it and then I didn't seem to have any of it. But it's back. Just a few, just a scattering to test me. Um, I do like the ones where there's not much at all where there's not many um, colours because I feel like there's more of each colour so I actually get through it quicker. It reminds me how I do get through my other Heaven and Earth design, my mini that only has 15 colours. It reminds me how quick I get through that. But maybe when it comes um, to me having finished this one and I start working on my mini more, it won't take quite as much of my day um, to get a section done. I did miss a couple of sections this weekend. Uh, my plan was always to sort of have the weekend off, but I did try to get most of my videos ready beforehand. There's just been the last couple that I wasn't able to get done before the weekend. Uh, but Catherine's actually on reading week at university this week, which means she's home. So she's currently watching Luna so that I can get this whip and waffle done on the day. And then I'll probably be back to doing it at the weekend for the following week. So you probably won't see much of an update on the next one. 
but I'll still be here to answer, of course, comments and questions of which I say I do feel like there's loads of them. Uh, so I think that's sort of my update on the week. I have received this this morning though. Um, this is from Jackie, so thank you Jackie. But this is one of what she calls an everlasting pencil. So this whole thing is a lead tip, a bit like the pickup pens, um, but saves you sharpening it all the time in this gorgeous pink. And when you unscrew this section, it does have a rubber as well um, she said that she keeps hers in her pouch with her logbook so I think I may do the same with that one though I'm not sure if it will actually get more use if I just put it in my stationery drawer but yeah that was a lovely surprise this morning so thank you so much Jackie um, it's amazing what there is out there now uh, I never even knew that an everlasting pencil was a thing. I had no idea. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's all my updates off the top of my head that I can that I can think of. Um, so let's go into comments because as I say I do have loads of them um so army moa and jean says if it makes you feel better about your heaven and earth design being a long running project uh she says she started crocheting a blanket for her husband before they started dating uh it was over 12 years ago <laughs> Sometimes there are just those projects, aren't they, that just for some reason sit there um, and don't don't seem to move at any real pace. Um, she says she doesn't even know where it is anymore since she has half finished projects stashed all over her house. She said if she... Um, she said if she were to count all of her abandoned projects that she refuses to throw away, she said it would be in the hundreds. She said every week creativity strikes um, and then her motivation disappears. Oh dear. Uh, she says she likes to think that she get she's getting her projects started ready for retirement. That's definitely one way to look at it. I feel like I'd have to set myself a challenge if I had that many half-finished projects. I feel like I'd have to set myself some sort of goal, um, even if it's just to sort of gather them together, have a really, really good look at any that I do actually want to finish and those that I don't. Um, and actually let go of the ones that I don't want to finish um, on the basis of the space in my house, which being a UK house is smaller than what some of the rest of the world seems to be able to have. Um, yeah, I'd feel like I'd have to, you know, allow myself some space back and get rid of some projects. And then maybe I'd have to set myself a challenge a bit like with this heaven and earth design a bit like you know this project i have to finish two projects or something before i can start maybe another one um, so the numbers will dwindle down because you can't stop yourself from doing things that pop into your head creative wise because otherwise you lose the fun you lose the fun in it all and then you don't get anywhere but yeah, I think that would, I think that many finished projects would stress me out. It's stressing me out just having this one. That's why I've set myself a challenge to get it finished this year. Um, and I'm getting there. Say, I do have days. It, it's more so a weekend um, that I seem to 
sometimes it's quite easy to pull it out and get some done throughout the day uh, and other times it just completely gets forgotten because my weekend routine is different to my week routine of course I find if I get it out in the morning even if I start and stop and do other bits and do the section you know over the course of the day if I pull it out to actually start it in the morning then I'm more likely to do it than if if it gets to the afternoon um, I just sort of end up thinking nah it's not worth it today um, but I will take my five days a week Monday to Friday instead though I did miss Monday this week as well uh, we had a lot of orders over the weekend and of course they need to take priority uh, so by the time I'd got caught up on that it just it was too late in the day I had all the tasks that needed doing but yeah this is today's section I have actually it was very weird this morning not starting this section straight away um, normally I do it while I'm waking up so I do it between eight and nine and then start work at nine so it was it was very weird not doing that and actually diving Ooh, don't go marking one off that's out my square um yes yeah, so it was rather weird not doing it but I do feel like I've accomplished a lot this morning before I've actually started working on my heaven and earth design so we'll take the pluses um but yeah, still got quite a lot of blossom on this section, which is causing for lots of bittiness. There's quite a few symbols that I recognise. Oh, 317's back in there as well. That's not bit I've not had that one for a while. Maybe I'm gonna start getting another something going on. It's normally when there's something going on like a fairy or an angel or whatever else it decides is going to be on this tree um, it's normally then that I find I can potentially uh, get a zero colour though we are now what well past the 600 stitches we're on this the row between 640 and 660 and I have not ran out of a colour in the last hundred oh, and now I keep getting single ones is this blossom it's definitely the blossom but it's all a stitch or a diamond further to finishing uh, Crystal she said pattern keeper just put out a few new YouTube videos today she says they have two new features um, and Crystal actually put this up this comments actually from about 13 days ago so uh, it was just as I spotted the announcement I think on their Facebook page I then spotted this comment uh, she says the one she thinks that I like is the one that gets rid of your diamonds that are zero yes I am itching for it crystal absolutely itching for it and it is just it's just not downloading onto mine it just doesn't want to give it me yet so all I can do is keep checking um, I do have automatic downloads on so I would expect it to just tell me when I open Pattern Keeper that I have one um, but I still keep going and checking the Play Store each time that I finish um, I do like the fact it does also tell you so when you tell it to hide zeros it will um, so I've seen a few pictures that people have put up which have made me even more excited and even more impatient but um, it will tell you that it says new next to it 
i.e. it's a new zero and the zero doesn't disappear until sort of when your stitches reset which I think is the early hours of the morning uh, your stitches reset ready for your new day and yeah that's when your zeros will disappear off your screen which is ideal for me uh, because then I will be able to see when it pops up and says new and that will then allow me to de-kit that colour um, and I'll be able to see that it's one rather than it just vanishing. Um, I'll be able to de-kit the diamonds for that colour and then start the new day with the colours as they're supposed to be. I think I'm going to need some more diamonds. I try not to tip out too many but then there are occasions when I don't quite tip out enough. And there we go, I've tipped out loads. That's normally the way. The pot's pretty full. I did, when I did my de-kitting of um, Vivian the Fox Girl from Carrot Art. I did move all my Heaven and Earth design for this pattern, all the extra diamonds that I had into my cases. So they're in the little pockets in my cases. And I think it's my third case. I have loads of extras. It's got all the 3371 and a few other colours. Uh, that there's a lot of them. So I did do a refill of my pots the other day as I was going through my pattern. There is it up for me, makes the day a little bit different. Um, so yeah, I did sort of refill everything. So the 400 is pretty full at the moment and I've still got quite a few bags in the background. Uh, Jamie said she ordered a blank canvas from Heaven and Earth Design. She said it's the mini um, Magna Gallic Cloud. She said and all the drills are on their way. Ooh, exciting times. New projects are so exciting. Uh, maybe. <laughs> that's why Army Boa has so many new projects because that's the exciting part not the finishing of them sometimes it's exciting the finishing of them i suppose it depends how much it takes you to get there my glue dots decided to be extra sticky um she said the drills are on the way she says she has uh, a feeling that she will have the diamond painting done before she has the cross stitch version done Oh, I definitely would if it came to this. I think if I decided to do this as a cross-stitch project, oof, you'd be talking years and years and years. It'd probably pass me, keep me going past retirement, that's for sure. Uh, she said she has two pages completed on the cross-stitch version already. She said, thanks for the whip and chat. Well, good going on getting a couple of pages done already, that's for sure. Uh, some of the designs for Heaven and Earth Designs, doing it as a cross stitch, oh, I think people are amazing getting it done with that many colours. I could probably do my mini version as a cross stitch, I could handle doing that one uh, because it's not got colour changes anywhere near as often. But this one, nah, that's just frightening. Far too frightening. Uh, Annie's Pantry says, wonderful whip and waffle today. Thank you. Uh, Debbie also said that she got her her canvas from Smith's Beads. Um, and she did get poured glue. So that's good to know. Um, a poured glue canvas, if you can get it, is will probably be much better. Um, getting a blank poured glue canvas was not as easy a thing to do when I started doing mine three years ago. 
uh, but it's something I would definitely do now if I could. Okay, where's my next colour? Zoom in through a few. Oh, there we go. 520. We've had quite a bit of this recently. A bit of a green, nice dark green. Uh, Alice, she says, hey again from Down Under. She says she just wanted to say, she said that she has loved this journey with me on my heaven and earth design. Uh, she said her black and white one, she says, which she has posted in the Facebook group, is coming along really nice. And she says she can't get over how beautiful the shading is. She says she has a question. She says, when you place your diamonds um, on the edge of the canvas, uh, so you cover the line or line up the diamonds against the line. Um, it's probably more against the line, though occasionally they do sort of get nudged depending on the space within the canvas. Uh, my canvas line though isn't like a thick line um, so sometimes it will sort of go onto it and you can't really tell the difference. Um, but yeah I try to sort of butt it up to the line is my standard go-to uh, though occasionally when I'm working on a canvas I will soon realise that I am best placing it on the line. But that sort of comes with the familiarity of a canvas. There's my extra diamonds, by the way. Just while I'm changing my case over to case number two. Um, uh, she says she also wanted to know, she said, if there is anything else we can do in order to support your channel. Oh, thank you, Alice. Um, liking the videos making sure you're a subscriber are the two main free ones um, to help support my channel. The more you can, you know, make sure that you like any video that you watch, subscribe, make sure anybody you recommend, YouTube too, also subscribes are really big helps because then YouTube will tell other people about it because you like it. Um, so yeah, that's one main thing. Other than that, the only other thing is I do have a buy me a coffee. Um, I don't tend to promote it very much. Uh, it is on the it is a link right at the bottom of my website. It's probably the easiest way to get to it. <coughs> but I do have a buy me a coffee page, uh, which you can choose to. Every now and then, buy me a coffee, which helps go to support um, YouTube and add more zest and, you know, keeps us being able to do everything that we are doing um, and potentially more because there's always stuff going on in the background. Uh, there is also an option to set a subscription up for that as well so that you could, in effect, sort of pay a small amount each month. Um, just to support the channel that you're watching but I say like and subscribe is a big one um, and that is free which it's always the easiest option to do isn't it because everybody's you know everybody's budget is different for, for things in their life uh, Diamond Calicaloo uh, she says hi Rebecca she says thank you for this amazing video she says she loves my whip and chats especially uh, she, oh but especially these about your heaven and earth design she said uh, she wishes me a lovely week thank you I hope you have an amazing week too um, yeah I'm really enjoying actually doing this sort of extra whip and chat each week rather than it just being one. Uh, I feel like it keeps me uh, motivated with my heaven and earth design that I of course need to keep up with. 
It helps keep me accountable, motivated, and it means that I can keep the discussions as well more on point, um, which I do like. Now I've started splitting up the comments and reading comments from a heaven and earth design on a heaven and earth design. Um, I, you know, while there are other comments um, and other discussions that might be a little bit more generic, should we say, um, I do find that a lot of the, of course, heaven and earth design questions come out and that there may be some people who, you know, only watch the heaven and earth designs. Well, then I can be sure that all the right questions are in the right place. I always find it takes longer for my diamonds to go the right way up when there's not many diamonds in the tray for them to hit against. And that one tested me. Uh, Colleen, she says, hi Rebecca, she says, question for you. Uh, she says she ordered a crown royal canvas. She says, and she's checking her stash. And there is one DMC number on the chart, she says, that she can't find to order. It's number 504. She said she only needs 73 drills. She says, do you know anywhere that sells them? Um, she says she checks most places, but they don't have any. Ooh, that might be something I need to research, but let me just have a look. If I pull out my logbook, is that a colour that I have? 504. 504. I have it in round, but I don't actually have it in square. Um, if you bob a message on the Facebook group, clean, let us know what country you're in. And the rude camera interrupting me. Um, yeah, if you pop a message on the Facebook group with, you know, the country that you live in and which one that you need, because you only need a few, it might be worth us checking our stash. If not, there may well be, also be some people that, that buy extra diamonds often and therefore they can recommend where to get them from. I will have a look. Um, I've only ever bought blank diamonds once before. Uh, it was for this Heaven and Earth design. I think I only bought two, maybe three colours that I needed loads of and had hardly any. Um, like it was, it was a big extreme difference to how many I needed and how many I actually had. Um, so I will check them out and let you know. I will reply to your comment and let you know if my supplier has any. Um, but yeah, that's probably my recommendation. There is definitely a 504 because I say I have it in rounds. I just don't have it in squares. It's one of those. I think there are a few numbers in there that are rather um, random. So very rare, sorry. So, uh, you know, there's a few numbers in, in there definitely is in my list. Um, we have more than the 447 in our DMC list. And I've sort of checked and the numbers that, that aren't on um, a standard Googled 447 list are actually ones that I do have spares of. So there must be somebody that does them somewhere. Uh, but yeah, I'll have a look for you. And as I say, feel free to ask on the Facebook group because somebody may have some and they'd be happy to send them your way. Uh, but it definitely seems like a rare colour, that's for sure. <coughs> uh, Lynn loves diamond painting. She said, hi, Rebecca. Oh, I'm missing. Oh, that's why. Have I already placed them two? I've placed them three. Yeah, I have. See, I'm confusing myself because I've placed two in a line of three, but not them all. 
Ah, just to confuse. Uh, she says, thanks for the nice whip and chat. She said she made a decision to start her first heaven and earth design during um, the June waffle. She says she will be doing one square a day and she will see how quickly she can pick it up. Um, she has to admit, she says, when you first started your heaven and earth designs and you were using the paper chart, she said she thought to herself, there is no way she would ever do one of those. The paper chart is definitely harder. Um, she says then she saw one of my more recent ones where I'm using this tablet uh, and she thought oh maybe I could do that well I like the fact that this tablet option has opened it up for more people because it is a nice process it's different I just don't think it necessarily unless you have done one before or it's you know it suits your brain type I just don't think it should necessarily be the only one that you're doing um, it definitely needs to be a bit of a more long-term project um, she said her enjoyment level in doing a mystery painting she said was the deciding factor about getting on board with a heaven and earth design chart she said she bought herself an android tablet just for that journey yeah me too this tablet only has the pattern keeper app on it i have not downloaded any other apps i'm not interested in any other apps all i'm interested in is pattern keeper that's all i want to do uh, and say it was bought specifically for that purpose and that's all it's used for because everything else i use apple um, and everything's all synced and stored um, in my apple cloud so yeah i don't have a need for it otherwise so goodness knows what will happen to this poor little tablet when i have finished um, when i've finished my heaven and earth design patterns you never know i may i may do another one in the future i have a blank canvas to do a canvas from heaven and earth design to do before I think about whether I'll do another chart or not. Maybe I'll do one that's poured glue. Maybe I'll do another mini rather than a massive one. <laughs> um, oh, Anne Smith, she says, pat yourself on the back. She says, uh, great job of persistence. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think I had to, uh, which you know, pull on my stubborn streak um, to try and make sure that I. I obviously picked the not fully charged battery. Um, yeah, I think I had to tap into my stubborn streak in relation to this heaven and earth design and getting it done. Um, I'm enjoying the process though. I'm not. It's not something that I'm doing and not enjoying. Uh, I think I'm actually enjoying it more now I have set myself the challenge to do a bit each day because I'm seeing progress and I think that is a huge motivator um, and makes the process a lot more enjoyable when you actually see it happening rather than doing it very sporadically which is what it got to last year <clears throat> apart from that month um even the challenge of doing it once a month i think it just wasn't regular enough and there was just wasn't the motivation because i didn't see it moving um whereas now because i'm seeing the progress that's being made it's it's driving the motivation to carry on and get it finished so a section a day is a good thing just don't you know 
beat yourself up when life takes over and you don't get your section done for the day. Um, don't necessarily think I have to do two. Not if you want to keep it long term. Don't think you have to catch up if you want to continue doing your heaven and earth design over a longer period of time than say a month so when i did it in august i think it was august um i did tell myself you know i will do a section a day and if i miss one i would catch up the next day which was fine for the month but it's not fine over a longer period of time i think it affects you more um so yeah, just do a section a day, try and do it every day, but don't beat yourself up if it's not every day, because life happens and you'll still get there. And I am on 64.69%, which is loads better than it ever was before. Right, case number three. So I really feel like I'm starting to get somewhere and this is the one with absolutely loads of extras and I've already filled up my tubs. Um, Ren says, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. <laughs> she says, uh, hang on, let me mark that one off. Uh, she says, you've done it again. She says she doesn't have a way to use Pattern Keeper she says, which she think will be a big pain in her bum. Um, she says, but she has ordered a blank canvas from Ever Moment, she said, along with the drills. Um, let me grab that one. Um, she says, and then she printed the pattern off. She said, it's a project that is 165 centimetres by 150 she said she is kind of terrified um, as she has no idea how she will work around the canvas uh, so but she's so stinking excited for the challenge uh, if you're working on paper i recommend keeping your sections small um, otherwise you are constantly going to be missing diamonds even now, you know, when my eyes are only focused on what's on the screen. Um, so all I can see is the ones I'm working on. Whereas with a piece of paper, unless you blanked it off, you'd be able to see more. Um, and I'm still constantly missing symbols. As I tap down, I'll think, oh, no, I haven't got any of them. And then all of a sudden it shows me 20 of them. And I'm like, how on earth did I miss all of them? <sighs> like, how did I miss that many? Or I think, oh, I've only got a couple. And then I'll tap on it. And again, I've got them all over the page. So I just recommend if you're working off the pattern itself, keep your sections smaller. Uh, my mum does one square so she does a 10 by 10 square uh, and she's working off the pattern paper. It's what she's used to with cross stitch. It's what she's comfortable with. Um, and yeah, she's loving the process. She still misses diamonds, but it's less likely to happen or not happen to the extent that it will really annoy you. Um, so enjoy the challenge, Ren. It is a challenge. It is good fun. Um, and regular is the key. Uh, jo, she says, amazing progress. Uh, she says, it's tempting her to do another heaven and earth design project. I reckon it won't be long before you do another one, Jo. Uh, she says, but she's only on her second painting for the Diamond Art Club 2023 challenge. She said maybe she should do one as a break. The speed you do them, it would be a break, Jo. Um, she says, as always, she says, thanks for all that you do. I feel like the excitement level when I finish this painting is not just going to be me. 
it's really not. I think everybody is waiting for this one to be finished. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it being finished, but then I also need to figure out what I'm going to do with it uh, and how I'm potentially going to frame it, which I'm not looking forward to as much, though my brain's ticking away. I missed these three down the bottom. See? And this is with having them highlighted. I still miss them. I actually had a section the other day where I thought there was only one of this symbol. It's a symbol that doesn't come up very often at all. Um, and I thought I only had one of them on the whole thing. Then I spotted another one that I'd missed. So I ended up going back and doing it. And then I missed the third one. They were tucked in, in the sort of bottom edges, but I couldn't believe I missed three of them. Um, Jackie, she says, oh, wow. She says, that is looking fantastic. She says, when it's finished, it is going to be a showstopper. Because uh, every time you walk past it, she says, you'll notice something different. That's for sure. Uh, I am actually wondering whether to put it right at the top of my stairs. It's the longest wall I have in the house. So it is quite possibly going to be the best wall for it to go on. Um, but yeah, I need to finish it first and then I will make the decision. Um, but I'm thinking if I do it, I'm thinking I'm probably better putting it onto either pieces of foam board or trying to get myself a piece of chipboard that's big enough or potentially cut down to the right size maybe put in some sort of cornice around corn not cornice trim some sort of beading that's probably a better word some sort of beading around it so i'd be creating a frame but in sort of two separate bits but yeah that's a that's a thought process for later. Uh, Jeep Girl Stitches, she says the detail is amazing. And she said it's looking so good. Uh, she also said, thanks for keeping me company. Uh, while she stitched on her um, super size max colour toy shop, um, Heaven and Earth Design, she says by Amy Stewart. She said she just hit 0.55%. I feel your pain, Jeep girl. I really do. Um, it can, yeah, it can be disheartening, especially if you look at the percentage often. Um, and you, you know, you, you just nowhere near like a goal. The minute your goal is 1%, and then you sort of think, oh, 1% isn't that much. So yeah, just enjoy the process. Um, and then maybe you'll surprise yourself when you do look at how far you've gone. But having said that, I think I look at my percentage every time I do this whip and chat. I try not to look through the week. I try not to be constantly looking at the percentage. I try to do it check for my update because that's my latest obsession uh, check to see if I've got the update and then just not look um, and move on because yeah it's it's nice to sort of have a weekly update on my percentage instead of a daily one where it just doesn't seem to want to move but we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, Colleen says she just bought a mini crown jewel canvas. She says, oh, uh, so it's Colleen who mentioned number 504. Apparently it is no longer available for diamond painting. So she's having to use a different colour that's close. 
Um, she said she did notify Heaven and Earth Design and they are going to look into it. So maybe that's where mine one has come from. It was that symbol, 986, that's the one I missed. Three of them while doing it. Oh, did a big jump through those colours then. Um, so yeah, she's using a different colour that's close. Well, I will keep hold of your other comment and just double check my supplier. And if you do want to use a colour, you know, the same colour, maybe see if somebody on the group has one, as I said earlier, because uh, somebody who's been diamond painting for quite a while may have some of them in square. Um, that they can send your way. Uh, Lady Dax, she says, wow, she says, this is looking amazing. Uh, she says she really appreciates that I'm still looking for the Xyron refill. Oh, yes, the Xyron refill that is the bane of my life. Um, she says she can't find a UK supplier either. Uh, she said also, she says she's been looking through her trays and she realised uh, that she missed out on the bright yellow one um, and also that we haven't had a brown one yet. Yeah, I wasn't sure if brown would bring the same level of excitement. Uh, she said, hmm, she said, is that a pair of pretty tweezers that she sees there. Yes, that may well be. So we have quite a few different exciting bits that have been turning up recently for future launches. Uh, Nancy, six days ago, she said she got all of her updates today. Oh, jealousy doesn't suit me. Um, enjoy your updates. Nancy I'm still waiting on mine I know they're rolled out bit by bit uh, but every now and then I do see a Facebook post on the Pattern Keeper uh, page where somebody else is you know asking a question quite often about the new update and I just see them being marked as zero and I'm just like oh I want I'm so itchy, you know, other than that, I don't think I'm bothered. All the other updates I've probably got straight away, but I've not been bothered by them. Um, I wouldn't know because I've not been bothered by them, but this one I want. Right, oh, just one, just one. Um, Jess, she says, it's lovely to see your progress on this. She said, you should be proud of yourself. Thank you. I'm proud that I'm keeping it up. Uh, she said she can't wait to see it finished later on in the year. She says, uh, you got this. <laughs> Thank you. I have got this. The determination is there more so than ever uh, to finish this one this year. And... Yeah, I'm kind of excited as well to be able to work on my other one um, and get and see some progress on that, which as I think I said at the beginning of the video, it won't be, you know, to do the same size section, it probably won't take me as long because there's less colours. So there's less tipping into the tray and tipping out of the tray. So I'm rather excited, rather excited to be able to work on that one when this one's finished. I think I'm just going to keep up the momentum and move from one to the other. Um, plus, I'm excited to actually do the canvas itself, the blank canvas, and to start the process of pulling the diamonds together and all that sort of stuff, which I'm not allowing myself to do until the two I have are finished. I love filling in this colour. I feel like it makes a, a good dint. Uh, 
handcrafted by Helen. She said she recently bought uh, an A2 light pad to see if it would help with her Dreamers design canvas uh, that she was struggling to read. She said it helps, it helped, she said. See, I find that they look worse when I use a light pad. The Dreamer designs do. Uh, my Diamond Art Club looks really, really clear when I use a light pad. Um, she says, she has found that even though she doesn't need to use a light pad in the summer, um, she says she does use them in the winter. Uh, she said it has turned out that it's a bit bigger than her easel, um, which is great, she says, because it extends the size that she's able to use for her larger pa painting. She said hers is mains power, uh, so the cord comes out of the, the side of the light pad, so there's no USB port that can potentially wiggle. That doesn't go there. I've just put it down and I'm like, that's not where it goes. Let's try that. Um, and break. She says it's quite a sturdy connection. Well, that's good. Um, I have recently just got a bigger light pad though I got an A3 um, slightly bigger on my easel I've actually got an unboxing of it I think next week I think that unboxing video goes up but I decided to treat myself to an A2 light pad look at that one diamond um, yeah and it's working really nicely again just just a little bit bigger than my easel but it's great for my big canvases. Um, it works really well when I'm working on Cosmic Trip, which is still really enjoyable. It's not quite got to that middle ground yet where I'm a bit like, oh, it's a big canvas, this. Um, Shelley, she said she would love to hear the story of how the shop started, she said, and then expanding. She says she found my discussion on shop logistics really interesting. Um, it sort of happened. It, I mean, sometimes that's where um, the best things can come from, is things that are sort of driven in effect by the customers. And oh, there it goes. Um, so it was initially we designed, mainly Megan designed um, some stickers for my spare storage. Um, and some pretty ones, just, just to make it pretty. That was the idea, to make my spare storage pretty. And let me just swap my case over. Um, yeah, she designed some stickers for me and I showed them on, on my YouTube channel. I updated my spare storage and then it actually started that Megan was doing the odd sheet of stickers. People were asking for them to be printed. Um, so we did offer some cut out ones that you could cut out yourself and print on sticker sheets yourself. Um, as a download but people were having trouble they didn't have a printer or things like that um, so we started initially Megan was sending out um, stickers to people for them to be able to do um, pretty up their storage basically just like I had and I've just put another one in the wrong place um, so yeah, that's how it sort of started initially. Then um, it got that there were quite a lot of people interested in the stickers. So we looked, uh, that's when we started looking into the likes of a laser printer. Uh, Megan already had a, a colour laser printer, but it was getting old. Um because she's a teacher. She, she got one before she went uh, to go to uni with. Um, 
so yeah we started looking at getting stickers that were pre-cut into the right size so that you know they were cut stickers and the job was done you could just peel them and stick them um, also looked at providing the cardstock pre-cut because again that was something that some people it's just not their forte of cutting cardstock um, so that's what the shop started with we'd already got the website and set up the website because I wanted somewhere that was easy to find the videos that I'd done um, while there are playlists on YouTube it's not necessarily easy to find the more more of the videos that are lessons and you know experiments comparisons that I've done between different types of canvases or different sizes of canvases I've done quite a few videos on those and they get lost after a bit on YouTube um, so we'd already got the website or I already got the website for that so it became quite easy to turn it or to add on the option to have a shop from there so it started say with stickers cardstock went absolutely crazy from there um, and then hubby did get a 3d printer for doing diamond painting trays and I had the design in my head and he made it come to life exactly how I wanted it to be if not better um, and that just, yeah, completely set, set things off. It's still one of our best sellers is the trays. Uh, we now have six 3D printers um, trying to keep up with demand and with future projects that we want to be able to do. Uh, and yeah, it just sort of grew from there to the point that I now do it full time. Um, and it keeps me busy full time. Um, we did our first diamond painting advent calendar last year, um, which was a success and a flop all at the same time. In the fact it was such a big success, it actually, you know, was disappointing for some people because they couldn't get hold of one. Uh, so the actual advent calendar itself wasn't a flop, but... The fact that we didn't have enough was a flop. Um, and yeah, I'm currently working on the advent calendar for this year already because we have probably done five times the amount that we initially did um, for the advent calendar this last year to ensure that we can meet demand. And why have I not got an empty one over here? because I've put one in the wrong place. Hang on. See, chatting and diamond painting doesn't always work. So that one shouldn't be there. That one should actually be there. Because <sighs> that was easy enough to work out is the reason I did that, otherwise that would have been too much hard work but it was fairly easy to figure out um yeah so the trays blew up the spare storage blew up and we became a shop that does accessories for diamond painting which I think you know most sites will sell some accessories but they don't sell a lot um, and we are slowly but surely building up our options so that we can sell even more um, accessories for diamond painting. And we're constantly working on new ideas and yeah, new things that we can provide so that you can get all your accessories in one place. Right, I'm not going to need any of those blues. Why have I got, oh, I've got one here, but that's actually one that I've just not marked off. No. 
Okay, so let's mark that one off. And then, I think I just need the end ones. I'm going to go through the end ones. If there's any others that I've missed a bit further up, then they're probably in this same case anyway. And it's not as bad flipping through when they're in the same case. So yeah, it sort of went from there. Uh, Anna, she says, so beautiful. She said she would love to do this image. Um, she says, but smaller and definitely with less colours. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're buying the diamonds, then go for the less colours. Um, I went for more colours because I was using my spares and figured I would have, you know, more of the colours but in smaller quantities. Um, but hey, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, there's a few different ones. There is smaller ones of this little dreamer's tree. Um, this one is the super size and max colours. Um, but there are definitely ones that you can find that are smaller. The detail will, of course, be different. But it can, there's definitely ones. I think there's one with about 90 colours, which is a lot, a lot more manageable. Eventually, at some point this year, I will get this down to 90 colours. Um, get it down to being in a few less 60 bottle cases, which will be good. Uh, Susan, she says, for all the time, she says that you have put into this piece of diamond painting. She said it should be in your home. Yeah, I am swaying towards this going in my hallway. So that's sort of what I'm thinking at the moment. As soon as it is done or extremely, extremely, you know, closer to being done, I may start rearranging some furniture at the top of my stairs. Um, I have a bookcase at the moment at the top of my stairs that my granddad made. Um, I may move that just to a different part of the landing around the corner. Not quite as an ideal situation, but still a good place. It has been there in the past. Um, so I'll move that around and then see if this can basically just be at the top of the stairs. Because <laughs> say, I think it's, it's the longest wall in the house, so it's the most likely wall to be able to work um, out of all of them, or at least be tall enough. Um, Susan also says, she says she gets the magnetic plugs um, and power cords for her light pads. So I think I have done a video on it in the past when I used to, when I, before I got my battery um, light pad. Uh, you can get adapters that go in your light pad uh, and they're tiny like this. So the adapter goes in um, and then you just have a circle that is sticking out um, and you actually the power cord attaches with a magnet which means if you ever knock the cord it just disconnects the magnet it doesn't rip your usb port which can be the problem with light pads especially with some of the thinner ones and um, they just can't handle um, being knocked uh, Linda, she says, yay, she says she got her order uh, and she's finally been able to start reorganising her spare storage, she says again, she says for the third time, um, she says she loves it when she has some whip and waffles to keep her company while she's doing the organising, she says another enjoyable chat. Yes, organise your diamonds with a friend. Um, whip and chats, good for that. 
Uh, even my de-kitting, some of my de-kittings are quite long and they're good for that as well. But today's section is done. Um, I'm still a few days away with a Heaven and Earth Design comments. So I do still have more, which is good, um, especially if I will be doing the whip and chat this weekend. Uh, so you're probably not going to see me having moved much further along on here. But I always like to move my section over, ready for the next day. Oh, tomorrow's actually looks like a lot of the same symbols. So it does look like this is more of, you know, just the tree trunk. There is the odd little bit up here. And there is an odd little scattering of symbols that aren't the likes of 300, 310, 3371, 938. There is a little scattering of them, but not a lot. So maybe tomorrow's section will be a little bit quicker. So I tend to move it over, hit my highlight, and then I have to close down the app. Um, so while I'm here, let's just see if I have my update yet. So I just go to app updates, um, updates available, nope. Apparently Google News can update, I really don't care about Google News. And every now and then I do search for Pattern Keeper just to check, it says open, not update, which means, <sighs> It's not, it's not ready for an update. That's a shame. Oh, is that a fairy or is that a branch? That might be a branch actually. Let's have a look, where am I up to? So, this was my other fairy here. So I'm around here. I am going to be coming down, oh, I am going to be coming down here to some sort of little hut at some point. So there is some activity going on, but I think that might be a couple of rows down. Um, but yeah, it is getting there. Slowly but surely, my tree is coming to life. Uh, I definitely have more done than not done. So that's the 600 mark, 620, 640, 660. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining me for this Heaven and Earth design. Um, I will chat with you for the next one, um, which I'm not sure how far along I will be. Um, by the time I get that done, time will tell. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.